Hey, what is going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in. This video is going to be going over the markets. I'm going to go touch on a couple things, uh, pieces of news, and then I'm going to get into a little bit of Bitcoin technical analysis. We're going to look at Ethereum and we're going to talk about the overall markets in general, um, kind of how like a more macro bird's eye view on how the institutional money is is looking at the markets in general, right? Um, because they're not looking at just crypto. They're looking at all sorts of other factors. They're looking at the S&P. They're looking at uh, commodities, you know, precious metals, all this other stuff. And and it really, I think people are like underestimating how that can affect the cryptocurrency market as well. And so I just wanted to briefly touch on that because everybody says that Bitcoin is going to be a great hedge for when the stock market crashes and stuff. But we're not really sure yet. You know, we don't know. We haven't been tested and with all of this new regulation coming out and you know all the fud that's been surrounding um the cryptocurrency markets especially you know today we're in this sea of red pretty much everything is in the negative from where it was sitting yesterday and i think one of the reasons for this is the ceo the ex-ceo of mount gox mark carpellis he he basically posted this on reddit and um it was sort of an apology, sort of not, like kind of hard to tell, but he he's basically just saying, you know, the way that the Japanese bankruptcy laws work, you know, that he's going to be coming into a ton of Bitcoin and, and he like doesn't want this. He doesn't want billions of dollars. Um, he says, from day one, I never expected to receive anything from this bankruptcy. Um, he thinks it's his responsibility to make sure it doesn't happen. And if you read down into the comments, you know, there is a lot of positivity, which is good, but I think a lot of people, including the the smarter money, is looking at this and saying, "Okay, there there could be a massive sell off." And basically, if he is trying to, you know, make everybody whole who lost their money, which is basically what he's saying, he says, "I just want to see this end as soon as possible with everyone receiving their share of what they had on Mount Gox, so everyone, myself included, can get some closure." Um, I think a lot of people are anticipating another sell off and and this can happen in multiple ways if you know the Japanese government you know takes over their position with the with all the bitcoin and then they they do a mass sell off or or however they they decide to go about this it's kind of um smoke and mirrors right now we're not really sure but I think a lot of this is anticipation and then there's been a couple announcements today regarding big banks um people who are covering the crypto markets are saying you know basically gold is going to be the the safe haven when the markets crash when the s p goes under if you look at the s p we've definitely seen um a bit a pretty nice retracement from the all-time highs that we we saw a couple months ago and you know the, especially with all the trade embargoes and all the stuff going on with uh the us and china it's there's a lot of uncertainty even in the the traditional financial markets and this is causing you know today we actually had a nice bounce this morning before the markets open i was reading some news news articles saying you know that there's going to be a, a major sell off in the dow and we're going to be down you know 4 or 500 points by the end of the mar the day um that didn't happen which is nice and i know this isn't the dow this is the s&p but you know if if that did come to fruition um, we, we're not sure, like everybody talks about crypto and Bitcoin being this safe haven and this store of value when the stock markets crash. But when major, you know, people at major banks are saying, OK, we think that, you know, our investments are going to go towards gold and, and we're not sure it's Bitcoin is still unproven. So we're not sure um, I'm not you know, this is just something to watch. So um, we'll just jump right into Bitcoin yesterday. We were looking at this as a pretty impulsive Elliott wave here, and I was expecting a high, a, a larger five wave. And when I made this video, we were still sitting, we were, we were right about in here. And, um, I was expecting another bounce up. We definitely, we didn't get the volume required. We definitely had some bearish volume, um, some sell off in this region. And then now we're kind of, we're, we're bottoming out again here and we're going to see what happens. This is a, a price movement that I'm definitely watching. Um, for me right now, crypto in general, Bitcoin especially is, 
And, and Ethereum actually more, especially than Bitcoin is in more of like a no trade zone for me. I'm kind of just patiently looking back and fiat kind of just waiting to see what happens. Um, this Elliott wave is still valid. What we drew yesterday, this one, two, three, four, five up the five wave is pretty small, um, but that's okay. This, as long as the three wave is not the shortest, then this is a valid Elliott wave. And then we have our ABC correction down. The C was um, elongated here for sure, but we do have our, our five waves down. We have a one, two, three, four, and five wave down. So we are, this is a, a corrective. And, and if we look at the um, Fibonacci retracement, see how far we retraced from the highs. I mean, we're at near that 70. We almost wicked right on that 78.6 line. Um, so 78% retracement. Now we want to see if we can hold. We definitely have a support line that we can draw around 6,400, um, somewhere right at this bottom. So if we do break through this, this 78% retracement line, then, you know, we, our next, our next go to support line is here. And we're going to need to, to really watch this and make sure, see if we can, we can trade above this line. And this is really important because if we look back on a more macro scale, uh, maybe even on like the week chart, what we're looking for is higher lows and higher highs, right? We don't want to see these lower highs and lower lows because that just means that we're going into oblivion. We're going, we're continuing going down. So we had, we had a, a higher high, like uh, this was our bull run, right? All of these are higher highs and higher lows. Now, when we're in this bear market, we're looking for a trend reversal. And obviously here we had a lower high and, and again, we had a, a lower high and a lower low, a lower high, a lower low. And this is when we bottomed out down here around 5,800 or so. And then we saw a bit of a trend reversal and we, we ended up with lower highs still. And, and this is what kind of, especially on this weekly chart, you can really get a better idea of what's going on. Let me delete all this stuff. Um, but what we're looking at here is if we can hold this $6,400 mark, we're actually still at a higher low. And so what this is really important to, to recognize is if we can hold this, this line, there's a couple things that would need to happen in a, in a trend reversal, right? Basically we have this, this situation that we're going on here, this would be a higher low, which would mean that this could be intact. So if we can hold this, this support line, then we can kind of trade up in here and we can start to make higher highs and, and make higher lows. And this would be considered a higher low as small as it is $6,400 to $5,800. Um, that'd be a really good sign for me to see this. So this is a, a, a a support line that I'm very, very closely watching and I'm looking at the volume as well. I know I said yesterday, I'm not too worried about the volume, um, especially because we've, we've drawn those, those descending wedges, um, a few times on the Bitcoin chart and how, when you get closer to the apex of these descending wedges, let me, let me actually pull this out to the four hour and I'll draw this real quick. And this is going to be real rough but we drew something like this in one of our past videos and we're getting real close to this apex and basically what happens when you get closer to these apexes and a lot of people think that these triangle drawers and everything were all smoke and mirrors and stuff but these are used in the stock market as well um and they're not always correct you know you're not always going to see perfect um perfect technical analysis um, you know, these, these are just giving us ideas on basically what our best probabilities are for a trade. And so when you do get closer to these, these end of these apexes here, you tend to see volume decrease. And the same sort of thing happens when you're looking at these descending wedges in this region. So we drew this one yesterday. So it was something like this and it was, you know, this is super rough, but as you can see, the volumes tends to decrease towards when you hit the bottom or near the bottom, then you see a massive increase in volume. And so we had first, we had a massive dump off in bearish volume and then boom, we hit our bottom and we bounce back up. And the same thing happens in here um, and in this region. 
So we can kind of expect the same thing, and maybe we'll we'll start to see a bit of a of a, a bullish volume coming out of this, and especially if we can stay above that sixty four hundred dollar mark, I'll be happy to see that. Um, and then if we look at our RSI, maybe on the one hour or so, we're definitely oversold if you can see this so where we're sitting right now and we we're still in this bearish candle but we're definitely oversold but if you're looking on this candle we're having some bullish divergence which is nice to see so we might be a bit oversold and we might be looking for a bounce pretty soon here and that'd be nice to see, um, especially with that Elliott wave and this ABC correction that we're seeing here. Um, if those are valid, then then we should see maybe a, a little bit of consolidation, maybe a little bit of a bounce here. The only problem is the bounces have been really, really small today. So we're seeing like this little bounce was very minuscule. This one was a little bit bigger, but still small. And then when we bottomed out here, still a very small bounce. So uh, there's not a whole lot of, of support from where we're at right now. You know, maybe some very minimal support at like 6,700 range somewhere in here. But, um, you know, this is just what I'm looking at in Bitcoin. Um, I'm still very bullish long term. So don't take this the wrong way if you think I'm all negative <laughs> about the outlook of Bitcoin. I see a lot of traders and stuff, um, a lot of really highly respected technical analysis guys talking about how they're thinking Bitcoin could go all the way down to like a thousand dollars or something. I'm not calling that. Um, I'm actually very bullish for the next couple months. It's just we, if you're looking to trade, you don't want to get into bad trades. So this is kind of a no trade zone for me. Um, you, I mean, you could play these, these little intraday movements, but if you're losing, I would just stop, you know, take a step back and kind of reevaluate, maybe wait until we have a little bit more a little more action. So with Ethereum, I just wanted to bring this in the macro scale again with how we showed Bitcoin was Ethereum is still making lower lows and lower highs. So here on this one week candle that we just made or we're making, this is definitely a lower low right here. So I'm looking at this in more of a bearish manner than I am with Bitcoin. Um, just for obvious reasons, you know, you're seeing a lower high, a lower low, a lower high a lower low down in this region and then it just continues to make lower lows and lower highs so what ethereum is going to need is it's going to need an extra couple of weeks to kind of get back on track behind bitcoin like it's almost like a step behind if you look at it that way whereas bitcoin we still have this opportunity to be making this this higher low you know bitcoin is is sitting at a higher low than what it's already bottomed out as so that's kind of why i'm i'm a little more bullish on on bitcoin for the short term for the long term i think they're both going to be fine they're both going to rebound and and i i have no doubt that they're going to both kind of crush past their all-time highs maybe not in in 2018 but maybe real early 2019 who knows you know i'm not a fortune teller but i'm that's just what i'm thinking um Anyway, in regards to a couple other notes was, I'll make this quick. There's there's somebody from JP Morgan, um, I forget her name, Amber something or another. She was the lead blockchain developer kind of in charge at JP Morgan. And she's moving over to um, to kind of start her own thing in in blockchain. And so that's a, that's a really good piece of news. It's positive news. There's big names getting into the crypto space still. Um, I've talked about this in previous videos. Um, there's a lot of really good news going around in crypto that's not getting publicized. So um, just to see a big name from JP Morgan's, you know, blockchain division moving in to do their own thing must mean that there's some, you know, some roadblock for them in these big companies where now she can go out and, and start her own blockchain company or whatever she's going to do. But um, she, she clearly said that she's staying in the crypto space and staying in the blockchain development space. So this is all really good news. And then other big companies, um, Charles Schwab backed companies are buying, you know, $400 million exchanges and um, things are, are going to turn around eventually. We just have to kind of wait and see if you're trading definitely for me in the short term, the, the next, you know, 12 to 48 hours is, is kind of like a no trade zone. I kind of want to see what plays out in this region. But with that said, guys, subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up on this video if you like 
these kind of videos. Um, links are in the description for everything else, and I'll catch you in the next one.